Hello students, welcome to the lecture on commerce and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the models of e-commerce, discuss the generation of e-commerce, explain the concept of e-government and e-banking, define e-marketplace technology, explain e-payment scheme and understand search engines. Let me first tell you what e-commerce is. Electronic commerce or e-commerce is a term for any type of business or commercial transaction that involves the transfer of information across the internet. It covers a range of different types of businesses from consumer-based retail sites to auction or music sites to business exchanges, trading goods and services between corporations. It is currently one of the most important aspects of the internet to emerge. E-commerce allows consumers to electronically exchange goods and services with no barriers of time or distance. Electronic commerce has expanded rapidly over the past five years and is predicted to continue at this rate or even accelerate. In the near future, the boundaries between conventional and electronic commerce will become increasingly blurred as more and more businesses move sections of their operation onto the internet. Business to business or B2B refers to electronic commerce between businesses rather than between a business and a consumer. B2B businesses often deal with hundreds or even thousands of other businesses either as customer or suppliers. Carrying out these transactions electronically provides vast competitive advantages over traditional methods. When implemented properly, e-commerce is often faster cheaper and more convenient than the traditional methods of bartering goods and services. According to Z vs S, electronic commerce has been redefined by the dynamics of the internet and traditional e-commerce is rapidly moving to the internet. In the last two decades, technology has significantly changed. Computers specifically are now sleeker, faster, and most importantly, more accessible. Convenience is becoming of more and more importance, and contacting people throughout the world has never been easier. As a result of this, e-commerce was born. So what is e-commerce? Well, e-commerce stands for electric commerce, and is defined as the buying and selling of products or services over electronic systems, most commonly the internet. Beyond strictly internet-based businesses, e-commerce also entails improvements in business functions for traditional retailers. It also affects many business tasks, including development, marketing, communication, sales, and more. These innovations in existing business functions drastically improve productivity and can have a dramatic impact on the economy. E-commerce is international. Asia represents the largest online market in the world with a population of about 3 billion and over 825 million internet users. That's 42 percent of all internet users in the world. Asia is an emerging market which means that it is a nation experiencing rapid growth and industrialization. Emerging markets are excellent opportunities for North American companies as they are in constant demand for new and innovative products. Thanks to e-commerce, it has never been easier to conduct business throughout the world and reaching international customers has never been timelier. E-commerce is also an incredible tool for new businesses as it allows them to rapidly broaden their customer base. With the advent of the internet, the term e-commerce began to include electronic trading of physical goods and of intangibles such as information, all the steps involved in trade such as online marketing, ordering payment and support for delivery, the electronic provision of services such as after-sales support or online legal advice, electronic support for collaboration between companies such as collaborative online design and engineering of virtual business consultancy teams, 
Electronic Commerce EC is where business transactions take place via telecommunication networks, especially the internet. Electronic Commerce describes the buying and selling of products, services and information via computer networks including the internet. The wide range of business activities related to e-commerce brought about a range of other new terms and phrases to describe the internet phenomenon in other business sectors. Now let us discuss about models of e-commerce one by one. A type of commerce transaction that exists between businesses such as those involving a manufacturer and wholesaler or a wholesaler and a retailer is B2B model. Business to business refers to business that is conducted between companies rather than between a company and individual consumers. A typical supply chain involves multiple business to business transaction as companies purchase components and other raw materials for use in its manufacturing processes. The finished products can then be sold to individuals via business to consumer transaction. The B2B model involves electronic transaction for ordering, purchasing as well as other administrative tasks between houses. It includes trading goods such as business subscription, professional services, manufacturing and wholesale dealings. Sometimes in the B2B model, business may exist between virtual companies, neither of which may have any physical existence. The exchange of products, information or services between business and consumer in a retaining relationship called as B2C model. Business or transaction conducted directly between a company and consumer who are the end user of its products or services. Business to consumer as a business model differs significantly from the business to business model which refers to commerce between two or more businesses. The B2C model involves transaction between business organization and consumer. It applies to any business organization that sells its products or 168, 168 e-commerce services to consumers over the internet. These sites display product information in an online catalog and store it in a database. The B2C model also includes services online banking, travel services and health information. The B2C model focuses on direct selling and marketing between a business and a consumer via an e-commerce website. A lower purchase volume of higher price products typically characterizes B2C companies since the model depends on individual transaction and eliminates the wholesale purchaser, the company can make a higher profit while the consumer spends the same amount of money or sometimes less. E-commerce involves electronically facilitated transaction between individuals, often through a third party. One common example is online auction, such as eBay, where an individual can list an item for sale and other individuals can bid to purchase it. The C2C is expected to increase in the future because it minimizes the cost of using third parties. Auction sites normally charge commission to the seller using them. They act purely as intermediaries who match buyers with sellers and they have little control over the quality of the products being offered. Although they do try to prevent the sale of illegal goods such as private CDs or DVDs. Another popular area for customer to customer transaction is online classified advertising sites such as Cryclist and Gumtree. Major online retailers like Amazon also allow individuals to sell products via their sites. It is most recent e-commerce business model. In this model, individual customers offer to sell products and services to companies who are prepared to purchase them. This business model is the opposite of the traditional B2C model. The C2B has come about as a result of two major changes. Unlike traditional media which are unidirectional, the internet is bidirectional making this type of relationship possible. In addition, the decline in the cost of technology means that individuals now have access to technologies such as powerful computer systems, audio and video capture systems and other digital technologies that were once the exclusive province of large companies. The C2B model involves a transaction that is conducted between a consumer and a business organization. It is similar to the B2C model. However, the difference is that in this case, the consumer is a seller and the business organization is the buyer. 
In this kind of transaction, the consumer decides the price of a particular product rather than the supplier. This category includes individuals who sell products and services to organization, a website on which a consumer can post his buyer data for the services he can offer. Different types of e-commerce basic models. What is e-commerce? E-commerce or e-business is where we can share business information, maintain business relationships, and conduct business transactions through the use of telecommunications network. There are four types of e-commerce basic model. The first one is B2B, which is the business-to-business e-commerce. B2B is where an organization handles transactions within its own value chain or with other business and organizations. The B2B company uses extranets for commerce and communication. There are three types of extranets. First, they use secure private network which physically attaches intranet with private lease telephone lines. Next is the public network, which uses public communications network. The third extra net is virtual private network, VPN. In VPN, data is specially coded or encapsulated for sending transactions over the internet. It uses public network with special protocols between business partners' intranet. The B2B business also uses intranets. They use intranets to support their internal business process, including influencers for employees, collaborations and teamwork, internal business transactions, and the distribution of information management tools. Intel and Gartner Group are the examples of B2B companies. The next basic model of e-commerce is B2C, business to consumer company. B2C company does retailing transactions between a company and individual customers through online service. In message encryption standards, software is used to authenticate the parties involved in a credit card purchase. The electronic payment system allows people to make purchases without revealing their credit card numbers. The SEO, search engine optimization, is used to increase website traffic by improving search engine ranking. Examples of B2C transactions are Domino Pizza online ordering and GSC Cinema online ticket selling. The third e-commerce basic model is C2C, which means consumer-to-consumer -consumer transactions. C2C is about making consumer connections or individual selling and buying directly with each other via website. There are three categories of C2C business, the digital equivalent of a newspaper's class field advertisement, for example, Craigslist company, eBit, the online auction, and the reseller model, Alibaba.com. The last type of e-commerce is B2E, business to employee model. B2E business handles activities that take place with the organization. For example, the campus management system, CMS, used in University Tun Abdul Raza and Taylor's University. The AgroBank also use a similar system. Staff can log in using the staff portal. That's all about e-commerce. Thank you. Let us now move on generation of e-commerce. E-commerce became possible in 1991 when the internet was open to commercial use. Since that date, thousands of businesses have taken up residence at website. At first, the term e-commerce meant the process of execution of commercial transaction electronically with the help of the leading technologies such as electronic data interchange EDI, and electronic funds transfer. 
Let's take a look at the evolution of e-commerce broken into four separate generations. The first generation of e-commerce involved direct business to consumer sales online. The second generation of e-commerce prompted by online auction sites such as eBay was the introduction of consumer to consumer and business to business commerce online. The third generation of e-commerce was promoted by Yahoo which took the existing business to consumer and consumer to consumer model one step further and set up a super online model. The fourth generation of e-commerce saw the introduction in 2009 of business to business to consumer to consumer commerce. E-government initiatives within this domain deal particularly with improving the internal workings of the public sector. They include cutting process cost, improving the input output ratio by cutting financial cost and or time cost, managing process performance, planning, monitoring and controlling the performance of process resources, making strategic connections in government, connecting arms, agencies, levels and data stores of government to strengthen capacity to investigate, develop and implement the strategy, creating empowerment, transferring power, authority and resources for processes from their existing locus to new locations, such initiatives deal particularly with the relationship between government and citizen, either as voters, stakeholders from whom the public sector should derive its legitimacy or as customers who consume public services. These initiatives may well incorporate the process improvement identified. However, they also include a broader remit talking to citizen providing citizens with details of public sector activities. This mainly relates to certain types of accountability, making public servants more accountable for their decision and actions. Listening to citizen, increasing the input of citizen into public sector decision and actions. This could be flagged as either democratization or participation. Improving public services. Improving the services delivered to members of the public along dimensions such as quality, convenience and cost. Indian banks are trying to make a life easier, not just bill payment. One can make investment, shop or buy tickets and plan a holiday at one's fingertips. To get started, all I need is a computer with a modem or other dial-up device, a checking account with a bank that offers online service and the patient to complete about a one-page application which can usually be done online. Each bank has tie-ups with various utility companies, service providers and insurance companies across the country. One can facilitate payment of electricity and telephone bills, mobile phone, credit card and insurance premium bills. One can transfer any amount from one account to another of the same or any other bank. Customer can send money anywhere in India. Once log to account, only need to mention the payee's account number, his bank and the branch. The transfer will take place in a day or so, whereas in a traditional method, it takes about three working days. Credit card users have a lot in store. With internet backing, customer can not only pay their credit card bills online, but also get a loan on their cards. Now, just this, they can also apply for an additional card, request a credit line increase, and God forbid, if one loses a credit card, one can report lost card online. This is something that would interest all the armed junta. Indian Railways has tied up with ICICI Bank and can now make railway pass for local trains online. Opening a fixed deposit account cannot get easier than this. One can now open an FD online through funds transfer. Online banking can also be a great friend for lazy investor. Now one no longer needs to rush to the vendor to recharge prepaid phone. Every time talk time runs out, just top up prepaid mobile cards by logging in to internet banking by just selecting operator's name, entering mobile number and the amount for recharge. The phone is again backed in action within few minutes. Leading banks have tie-ups with various shopping websites. With a range of all kinds of products, one can shop online and the payment is also made conveniently through our account. One can also buy railway and air tickets through internet banking. In spite of so many facilities that internet banking offer us, we still seem to trust our traditional method of banking and is reluctant to use online banking. 
But here are a few cases where internet banking will turn out to be a better option in terms of saving money. Customers should never share personal information like PIN numbers, password, etc. with anyone, including employees of the bank. It is important that documents that contain confidential information are safeguarded. Pinned or password mailers should not be stored. The pin and or password should be changed immediately and memorized before destroying the mailers. An e-marketplace is a location on the internet where companies can obtain or disseminate information, engage in transactions or work together in some way. Most of the e-marketplaces provide two basic functions. They allow companies to obtain new suppliers or buyers for company products or developing streamlined trading networks that make negotiating, settlement and delivery more efficient. Currently, e-marketplaces exist in many different industries. What is an e-marketplace? Well, Fiona, the e-marketplace is a virtual online market in which business buyers and business sellers can buy and sell goods and services. E-marketplaces have three main functions. They allow buyers to easily find and sellers to easily promote products. They facilitate e-commerce such as online ordering and payment and they create a framework for the legal conduct of transactions. Typical elements of an e-marketplace include the seller's portal, catalogs of the products, a search engine, a shopping cart and a payment gateway. There is a variety of types of e-marketplace, with some offering online auctions, some private marketplaces set up for a single organization and some independent marketplaces run by third parties for multiple sellers and buyers in a particular industry. Thanks Professor, for explaining the e-marketplace. E-marketplaces can be structured in several different ways. One way to structure a marketplace is similar to eBay, where the market maker is neither a buyer nor seller, but is a neutral third party. Other e-marketplaces are set up by a consortium of sellers that leverage the combined power to efficiently sell their products to buyers. Buyers can also set up a marketplace to reduce their costs and obtain better purchasing terms. An example of this type of marketplace is Covenant marketplace run by the automobile industry. Moreover, large buyers can set up another type of marketplace, a private marketplace for their supplier networks. The next part describes key consideration when looking at e-marketplaces. Ownership of the e-marketplace. This is crucial. Successful e-marketplaces are usually backed by good capital and this helps to ensure their success and longevity. Cost. This is also important. One should compare the cost of joining the marketplace with the projected savings and efficiency gains from joining the marketplace. Look for hidden costs. Ease of use and support. An e-marketplace should be easy to use and should not require a lot of training for the staff. Check to make sure that the marketplace does not require special equipment and has a straightforward transaction process. Industry fit. Many e-marketplaces are targeted toward one or two industries. Consequently, the process and structure of the marketplace are designed to maximize efficiency, gains and transaction costs for that industry. Marketplace participation. If there are no buyers and sellers listed on the marketplace, it is unlikely that one will gain anything from joining the marketplace. A viable marketplace will have a lot of buyers and sellers. This is the only way that an e-marketplace can work. Security or privacy. Be sure that the transaction information is not published or available for a third party or a competitor. One does not want a competitor getting hold of key supplier, data or pricing information. Moreover, one would only want to do business with reputable buyers. An e-marketplace should have system in place to prevent or reduce fraud. Other services. Depending on industry, one may want to check that other services the marketplace offers. Some marketplaces offer delivery or escrow services. Other marketplace pre-qualifies vendors. These may provide value for organization. Process integration. An efficient marketplace should be designed so that it integrates with existing buyer and seller ways of doing business. The e-payment scheme can be subdivided into two groups according to the online assumption. Payments by transactional method, in which single payment does not need previous arrangement between purchaser and vendor. 
payments by account method in which purchaser and vendor should have a system account with bank and certain type of equipment between both before carrying out the real payment transaction. The credit card payment transaction is tailored for a large charge payment of some hundreds or even thousands of dollars. In contrast, net money transaction is usually of low value payment with difficult transaction costs and online features similar to the thought of the e-payment transaction. The e-payment by small value transaction on service, this is acquiring certain interest from the area of research. A number of important services of e-payment are e-publishing and multimedia service. The e-payment protocol encompasses three participants which are as follows. User, the user customer purchases e-currency from the bank employing actual money by e-payment. The user can then utilize e-currency to carry out e-payment to buy goods. Merchant, the merchant is a data storage which provides user with both services and information. Bank, the bank is the trusted authority. It mediates between user and merchant in order to ease the duties they carry out. Anonymity, e-case must not supply any user with information. It means that it must be anonymous e-currency transaction. Divisibility, e-cash can be subdivided since the notes have a basic piece. Transference, E-cash can be transferred to a trusted authority by providing the suitable amount of currency. Overspending detection E-cash must be used for only once. The E-payments are stored and then converted to digital type. This will cause new difficulties during developing secure E-payment protocol. The payment is simply duplicated against the conventional physical payments method as the digital payment is characterized as simple sequences of bits Nothing in them stops them copying. Typically, web search engines work by sending out a spider to fetch as many documents as possible. Another program called an indexer then reads these documents and creates an index based on the words contained in each document. Each search engine uses a proprietary algorithm to create its indices such that ideally only meaningful results are returned for each query. A subject directory is a search engine that arranges its websites by subject areas. It searches a limited number of websites. Websites in a subject directory are added by people who select them for quality, relevance or some other criteria. This is why subject directories do not tend to return as many hits for our search as search engines do. A mat crawler is a search engine that searches multiple search engines and subject directory simultaneously. One can type in one search and the mat crawler will give the results for a number of search engines and subject directories. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Electronic commerce has expanded rapidly over the past five years and is predicted to continue at this rate or even accelerate. EDI is the electronic transfer of a standardized business transaction between a sender and receiver computer over some kind of private network or value-added network fan. The B2C model involves transaction between business organization and consumers. The C2B model involves a transaction that is conducted between a consumer and a business organization. E-banking or electronic banking means that banking transactions are carried out using computer.